Hey adventurers, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Janda, and this is my let's play of Pillars of Eternity. In the last episode, we assassinated a major political leader in Twin Elms, and now, since no one cares too much about that, we're headed over to the Twin Elms themselves to see what they're all about. Alright, well, I think that's everything over here handled. So let's cross over to the Twin Elms themselves. Oh, hello, Ghost of Theos. You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres, new sheep continue to flock to Ivara Exensios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning, but no longer. You honor me, Grand Inquisitor. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. Too many of our faithful have had their minds poisoned by the Kratom Witch. The tide is against us now. We have but one option. Ivara's following must see her exposed for what she is. She must confess her heresy before my court. How would we reach her? Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionis, things would be different. The king of Osionis is a sinful man. We have helped him to see the error of his ways, and now he fears for his soul. He would pay any price for absolution. But how would we get Iafara to move to Osionis? You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this, were there any other choice? Oh boy. I'm beginning to think this is our past soul, but it could be flashbacks to somebody else's too. I mean, it's not like we haven't done plenty of reading other people's souls. Oh. Hi. Oh, are these the Delamgan sisters? Two identical women seem to fade into view as they move away from the great trees that camouflage them. Their skin is tree bark, ridged and scaly, wreathed in a curling tangle of roots, buds, and blooms. Their hair hangs above the shade of serrated leaves like the drooping branches of the elms above, and the pupils of their eyes are encircled by hundreds or even thousands of concentric marks, as if to mark the accumulated wisdom of millennia. Turn around, flesh creature. Outsiders are not permitted to approach the elms. One of them extends a snarl of roots toward you that snakes and twists together to form something like an open hand, palm down. Do you not feel it, sister? Something familiar. An ancient soul, like the other one. Another defiler, no doubt. Let us fell him and be troubled no more. It would pay the debt of his predecessor. No, oh, let's not do that. That doesn't seem necessary. Hmm, so it would seem, Rhiannon. But we must not hasten to judgment. I see a different motive here. Different questions in these eyes. It's true. What of it, young trespasser? Is it as my sister says? Or are you here to stain this place with foul deeds? <laughs> this option is so tempting. <laughs> but a really bad idea. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the guy who you already met. There! By his no, own no, admission, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Really, sister? And you wonder why your leaves begin to fall out before midsummer. Clearly that man did not want to be followed. Whatever the relationship here, I suspect it is anything but cordial. Sita turns back to face you. The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Theos not long ago, and we can tell you where he went. But I find it curious that anyone would seek him out. Suspicious even. If we are to help you find him, we would know why. Well, honestly, answers one through five are all kind of accurate. Honestly, all six, probably. All, uh, all seven, arguably, but... Uh, what's the most critical? Well, from a selfless perspective, you know, stopping him could end Wideman's legacy. So that is the reason he passed this way. This is low, even for the Leaden Key. I told you we should have confronted him, Sheila. He has always been a poison. It would have been the last thing we ever did, sister. Who can be said to have ever gotten the better of Theos? 
Yes, but imagine how much fun it would have been. Can't you just picture him all strung up in the vines like an angry little puppet? But that's not what this is really about, is it? You are bound to that man. I see it now. You are awakened. Your soul is awake and something once buried deep now wells to the surface. Past overwhelms present, closes in around you. Your time has nearly reached its end. Yeah, that's somewhat true. Look, I just need to get to Theos. I'm sorry to tell you this, but Theos cannot give you what you seek. Nor can any man. An awakening cannot be undone any more than your past can be undone. I feel like at this point it's not that I want to undo the awakening, I just want to not go insane. What's she mean? I thought Merwald said... Oh, lost face is rigid. This is... permanent? What? Kinda glances at you. But that can't be right. Not after everything. There must be someone else we can ask. Scanny's gaze flickers to you. I'm sorry. Matiko, there must be some way. So this is all been for nothing. I'm uh, just going sane, huh? The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? Well, I would live with it if I could. That is the penance we all pay. But penance cannot be paid for a past only known in fragments and glimpses. Oh, wait, 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 no. So does that mean if I knew the whole past that, um... However... As much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening, there may yet be a way forward. Would you agree, Shiva? Yeah, yeah. What if, if I knew the whole past, would I be able to sort of make peace with it? I would. Were the way not so likely to end in death. Well, death might be preferable to going insane. It may. But not all deaths are alike. And the man you pursue is versed in thousands of them. Yeah, they also kind of... The Bastard. man Theos, you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, festering, unresolved. What it is, I cannot see any more than you. And without that knowledge, your doom is certain. But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it will trouble you as much now as it did then and merely speed your condition to its end. Okay, well, my past tends to come to me in pieces. How do I unlock the rest? You might wait for it to come on its own, of course. But when it comes, it will replace your sanity's last breath. Such is the nature of your condition. Well, that doesn't sound ideal. Other options? Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. Theos. He would remember, yeah? It is said the gods made his memory perfect. That he may never forget his charge. If he ever knew, he still does. Not that he would tell you, of course. <laughs> you have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms. The soul dragging mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. You may have wandered into Theos' path many times, in many lifetimes, without an awakening to show you why. Mm, interesting. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. Well, you said you knew where he went. He has gone down beneath the tower to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. He makes his way to the buried city, Sun and Shadow. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. Yeah, I don't know exactly what he's doing down there, but I doubt he's just gonna stay down there. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path on the tower's base, and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. Well, is there another way down there? We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Brayeth Yaman. A shortcut, in fact. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court, where faiths were judged in place of crimes. To most, it is simply a gateway to death. With the help of the gods, it can take you where you want to go. Okay, what court is this? No more than a ruin now. It is older than we. 
a place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it, but at one time there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course, but these were numerous and all put on trial for it. Those who did not repent were cast into the pit and imprisoned below. The fall killed them, of course. The prison was not for people, but for their souls, and their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit, so long as they pledged their service to one of them. But these are old legends. What do we mean, with the help of the gods? The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach Sun and Shadow. The court is old. We do not know much for certain, but it would seem only the gods themselves can grant passage. How would I go about getting the gods to help me? Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the Shroud itself, and a place of communion with all gods. If ever there was a time for prayer, you have found it. Um, who, who would I be praying to? Any god you can, I should think. I would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake, the feeling is shared. Right, so our only option is praying for Not help. the only way. Just the only one that doesn't end with your body impaled on jagged rocks. Okay, well I prefer to avoid that. No other way? None. How do I pray Fair exactly? Evron is also called the Hall of Stars, and the stars show us the allegiances of the gods. When stars are in conjunction, we know the gods they represent are aligned as well. That's You should something. choose a place to pray where you'll be closest to those you want to hear you. If a god stands alone, you should pray to that god. If they band together, you should address them all. Choose your words wisely, for all gods expect proper homage, and none has patience for fools. What do you okay. wish to know? Do I have anything else to ask? I guess so. How you know I was pursuing Thales? The same way that you are no doubt able to peer into the ether and experience the souls of others. It is something we are born with, some more, some less. A gift common to many creatures of the wilds. You share certain similarities with the man you pursue. For your sake, I pray they are few and of no consequence. Hopefully. So, why do people come to these elms without knowing why? A soul has a will all its own. Its needs and whims are seldom understood, but they follow them all the same. There is something about this place that reaches beyond our understanding. Something like a beacon. The elms have a way of uniting souls that have been seeking one another, with or without their owner's awareness. Sometimes it is for love, sometimes for vengeance, sometimes for peace. Often it is for no reason we will ever know. In your case, let us hope it is for peace. Well, or vengeance. Yeah, vengeance seems more likely, honestly. So who are the two of you? There is little to be said about us, for we are bound here. Caretakers and defenders of this place. Our journey has been over time, but not distance. Measured in observations, but not experiences. We have seen the elms grow tall. We have seen cities built, burned, and built again. The only constant has been the tower, a silent companion through the ages. You can imagine why this recent destruction has stirred my sister so. If you do nothing else, make that man pay for what he did here. Fair enough. What do we know about praying? We will tell you what we can. Okay, Before you go, Farewell, tell then. me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? Well, I'd like to undo the harm he's caused, but, um, also I feel like I don't really know yet. Like, he's still very mysterious. But I, I, I wish to undo the harm he's you caused. You would need to have twice as many lifetimes as he to repair his savage work. Probably. But perhaps there are strides you can make. All the same, think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul. But to yours. And be warned. 
Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. Let's see that. Um, anything else over here of interest? Oh, that's the way to there. Let me check down here first. Alright, spell. The clear waters taste sweet and refreshing. Okay, that feels like very important main story stuff in there. Maybe we check out Blood Sands first, actually. human sacrifice in here, which isn't great. Oh, this is pretty big, huh? Hold on a second. Welcome your presence, supplicants. The dwarven man stands motionless near the roaring fire that lights the cavern. Your sacrifice feeds the land, supplicants. Come forth. A gust of smoke curls around him, licking the charred flesh that bulges on his forearms. They f suddenly flex. Estramor. The dwarf holds his fists in a tight grip. Your kin doesn't come here to share with the tribes. What do you want? What is this place? Blood sands. The dwarf picks on his scarred forearm. His guttural sigh mingles with the crackling of wooden bones behind him. As I said, Estra Morin rarely visit our halls. The Glanfathans call this place Blood Sands. We call it home. The Ithic Knoll have tended the land from within this cave since before the arrival of the tribes to Twin Elms. The Garros crosses his arms. Be warned, Estra Mor. We bleed life to nurture it. Our sacrifices may strike you as savage, but the health of these lands depends on them, and it's unseemly for guests to insult their hosts. Well, I don't know about that, but okay, tell me about the sacrifices. Garrost spreads his snucky legs apart and locks his forearms. Everything must die to return anew, Estramor. Through the sacrificial rites, we offer supplicants the honor of giving their most precious gift back to their brethren. Back to the land. The dwarf lifts his fist, thick and muddled by red scars. The blood gives us strength. Even the Glanfothans have come to depend on the blood paint. They brim with power before battle, all thanks to the sacrifices of their kin. So who are the Ethic Knoll? Our order has thrived for generations. Before we came to Twin Elms, our rites fed the lands of the eastern mountains. Now we share blood for our Glanfoth. Garrost opens his palms, strikes red skin, run through them like flames. To everything that must end, our sacrifices bring a new beginning. He looks up. We sustain what's to come. All right, bye. Remember, Estramore, you're a guest in these halls. Respect our ways and we'll tolerate your presence among us. Essence taken by force may sustain one, but essence given freely empowers many. Smoke curls up from these charred skeletons. The smell is nauseating. Hmm. So they make war paint. They make the war paint that all the Cloud Fothans wear, and they do pretty much all wear it, I think. So, there is a lot of sacrifice going on here. Oh boy, me, for you. The petitioner before you is swaddled in loose-fitting robes. Her hair is greasy and matted. A glossy film of sweat and grime coats her exposed skin. She has the swollen figures, features of pregnancy and several missing teeth in her big, grinning smile. As you approach, she slowly turns to you and examines you from head to toe, smiling the entire time. Joyous day to you, she says. Despite coming from a wearied body, her voice sounds resonant and relaxed. I am Naka, midwife and lore keeper. Her hands run across the slight bulge in her belly. She rolls her head back and sighs a relaxed purr. Are you feeling well? Flawless, she replies. Apologies, I should be left to my meditation. 
The right of strength is invigorating, almost overwhelming to the senses. She reaches down and cradles her belly in her hands and turns away. Okay. Weird, but nothing I can really do with that at the moment. Why do they have flame blights in here? This feels like it could be a hostile area, but it's not currently. I think they're about to do a sacrifice here. But it looks pretty voluntary, so I'm not going to stop it. For the ones that will come to us. Are they going to kill this guy now? No? I don't know. Maybe they're just praying or something. Blood of sacrifice waters the soil of Arkonfa. This is a bit of a dark secret, really, Arkonfa. This doesn't seem great overall. The heat emanating from this pool threatens to singe the flesh of your face. Yeah, that's hot. Essence within to nurture flesh, and essence without to strengthen it. Be cautious. Be constant. Uh, don't worry about it, buddy. Hmm, it is stealing to loot from here. Be cautious. And the trap. Be constant. Is there anything good? Uh, for monks only. 2% raw damage per wound. And war paint flasks. Essence of sacrificed lives, blood, and magic. Fascinating. Hey. And Eater, why don't you go over there and trigger the trap real quick? Yeah, didn't bother him too much, really. That just grants knockdown. Oh, and a couple of diamonds. I'm here. I'm sure they don't mind a little theft. They're blood sacrifice cultists, anyway. I mean, come on. Pretty much the first stuff I've stolen all game was actually stolen. <laughs> well, that doesn't look too great. As your blood flows, so shall your essence. Your life's energy shall feed the soil, and your soul's energy shall enrich the community. This is by your own choosing, Sublicant? Yes. The elf's, elf's voice is high, but even. The dwarf grips a hatchet with both hands and raises it over his head. He throws his shoulders forward and swings the weapon into the elf's chest, connecting with a meaty thump. Blood gushes around the blade, and the sacrifice's screams rend the air. Oryx's shadow. She looks over her shoulder at Kana. I hope you weren't watching. Despite his earlier agreement, the elf thrashes atop the stone table, his torso, torso arching while his arms and legs remain tied in place. Meanwhile, the dwarf spreads his arms wide and allows blood to spatter his robes. When the elf is finally silent and still, the dwarf pulls his hatchet from the body and wipes it on his hem. He kind of makes a disgusted noise and turns away. I think I preferred these rites when they were only words upon a page. Why did I look? It's not as if I didn't expect it. Mm. Streaks of red-brown blood and globs of tissue have worked themselves into the minute grooves of the stone. Yeah, it doesn't seem... What's up, Archdrude? The dwarf wears crimson robes that are stained and streaked with dark patches. His face is smooth but lacking youthful elasticity. 
It's as if the lines and wrinkles have been formed and erased many times over. He watches you with the eyes like two black pits as he wipes his hatchet on his robes. Hail, Estramore. No one comes to Blood Sands without a purpose. What is yours? His voice is deep and rough-edged. It echoes like a river in an ancient cave. Who are you? I am the Archdruid of the Ethic Null. For centuries it has been my duty to guide our rituals and guard our knowledge. It is work that requires a certain resilience, but it is not without its benefits. Such as immortality, apparently. <laughs> Tell me more about Reth Reston's eerily smooth face is motionless as he watches you. Tell me more about the Ethic Null. We are a Druidic order that has been in Twin Elms since long within times. Our founders came from the White March, seeking a place where we might practice our beliefs in peace, as it were. Unlike most of our Glanfathan brethren, we seek answers in the world around us rather than in the teachings of the gods. We believe that all life has power and that this power can be siphoned and conducted. We are not, as some suggest, madmen and murderers. All of our rituals are conducted with willing participants and through methods... <laughs> that have been tested and refined over centuries. He nods, his black eyes shining. This allows us to create the war paint for which we are respected, if not loved. Uh, I want to know more about those. A guttural laugh rumbles from his throat. We merrily believe that in giving up something of value, the energy from that sacrifice can be diverted elsewhere. It is not so different from what folk just practice all over the world. If you want to turn the soil, sail a ship, or move a cart, you must expend energy. He smooths his robes, but we're best known for our practice of kith sacrifice. This is the most potent form of sacrifice because it releases the most energy. If we distill the essence of an entire soul into raw power that can strengthen the body, fortify the soul, and extend life. More than a little different from sailing a ship, kind of squirms. An interesting perspective, even so. The Glanfathans are never half-hearted in their superstitions, are they? What's war paint do? A special unguent binding raw essence to the wearer. It grants incredible advantages in combat and has made us indispensable to the tribes. Whatever they say about our practices, almost all of them have made use of our warp paint at some time or another. A slow smile spreads across his face. Fascinating indeed how the most strident objections can be overcome by circumstance. How do you differ from the Ovates? A dry laugh rasps from his throat. Golden Grove. I remember when Arona came up with that name. It gives you a darkly gleeful look. It used to be as green as the rest of the forest, you know. We're more similar than they'd like to admit. We both believe in achieving power without the double-edged aid of the gods. But their fantasy is pure creation. Something from nothing. They blind themselves to the fact that all life, from the mightiest dragon to the slimmest blade of grass, requires death. And the greatest ends require the greatest sacrifice. Um, well, I'll think about it. A wise enough sentiment. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I'm not going to accuse him of murder right here. That seems like it's just going to cause a fight. Arguably, it's not exactly... I mean, I don't consider it to be remotely an ethical sort of thing to do, really, but uh, now is maybe not the moment. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, if I wanted to shut the place down, my only way to do it would be to just butcher everyone here, which doesn't seem like that great an idea. The bravest sons and daughters fall not by the swords of Estramorin, but by the daggers of their brethren. Well... Agree to disagree. This is just lead back to the front, probably. The elderly dwarf blinks at you, not quite looking at you. Her eyes are pale and clouded with cataracts. Welcome to Blood Sands. It is rare that an Estramore sets foot in these caverns. Her sightless eyes fix on you as she tilts her head. What brings you here, I wonder? Uh, what do you do here? I sell and maintain certain goods for the preservation of our order, and I perform some of our ritual sacrifices. Something more? How did the sacrifices work? 
Like any worthwhile ritual, it's too complex to explain in detail. It involves clotting the supplicant's essence, binding it to their life's blood, and drawing it into a container or vessel. Tell me about blood sands. She cackles. Already I have heard your questions bounce along these halls. You asked Reston himself of our practices, did you not? This is the raw, bloody heart of our Godfath. Where some come to give... That's interesting that they added that dialogue line, actually. Where some come to give their essence back to their people. Your dry lips bend into a sardonic grin. Where others seek a noble escape from their trials. The legacy of the builders to the tribe is not merely Adra and Stone, but a sense of community. And it's here that Gronfathans come to sacrifice what is most precious. Even their own lives to preserve it. What do you sell? Paint and potions. Fair enough. Moving along. Yeah, this is a death cult. Uh... Probably their sacrifices do give them power, but it's very unlikely that it's actually enough power to be worth killing a bunch of your own people. However, I don't know that there's much of anything substantive I can do about it at the moment. Other than killing them all, theoretically, but... Uh... I'm not sure that's a wise move. Actually, I'm yawning a lot. Okay, let's uh, let's level up Kana, I guess. I think I was trying to get his survival to damage reduction two, probably. Are there really eight levels of these? Because he's gotten at best three. There must not be eight levels of these. Okay, this summons ogres. This revives allies, and that's potentially good. This bolts of ice in seven directions. This empowers allies. This also empowers allies. This is probably the most powerful, honestly. And let's see then. He could get various things, potentially. Let's give him just this. That's pretty basic and handy. And then let's rest. Oh. I wonder if I just can't camp anywhere in the, uh... Probably not. Probably have to go to the tavern. This is still technically a city area. Alright. Into the Temple of the Gods, then. Twin Elms. Seems like it's sort of like... Thanks for watching, adventurers. New parts will be up every other day, or you can watch live on Twitch. If you did enjoy the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing. Have a nice day, adventurers. This is Sea Lord Janda, signing off.